<clears throat> okay what kind of a person is her husband so what kind of her husband yeah number one he is a loving person the one who is satisfied with what he has he always count on his blessings and uh, appreciates that he's got a beautiful and loving wife and always tries to satisfy her with whatever she needs okay hmm? yeah helpful also of course so he is satisfied okay he appreciates what he has so when he whenever he is sitting on a dining table he he is of the view that nothing could be better than what he has got okay so he is always ready to uh, you know make his wife happy so the moment he gets the invitation he just hands it over to her uh, apprehending that she must be very happy to see that but quite shocked to see that she was not happy and did his best to make her happy thereby uh, giving all her all his saving to her without even second thought so his only purpose was to make his wife happy and otherwise he was very happy with his own life okay yeah that's that is how he always wanted that she she should be happy he did his best to make her happy okay he was a simple person he believed in simplicity that's how he was able to tell his wife that she could uh, adorn herself with flowers that's why he was able to tell her that she could wear that dress which she would wear uh, to theater and all he had solutions to all the problems but uh, but his wife was such the one who could never ever be happy even then he tried his level best to make her happy so the best quality of uh, that person can you people tell me that he was contented and all he always try to make her happy and all what's the best quality the most you know hmm he loves his wife that's why he is able to patience yes very patient i have never seen such person in my life so so patient so whatever his wife would uh, you know do whatever the tantrums she would throw he was always ready to bear that and in the end when because of his wife uh, he almost uh, you know yes he was all under debts he did mind that he bore all those you know debts he did over time he killed almost himself but never said anything to his wife even then he always loved her okay very patient <laughs> okay next question what's the next question find out page number is now the question in front of me is page number 49 what do uh, employees do next what do mr what do the mr and mr employees do next what did the couple do next so here it was page number 49 i am on okay page number 41 it's 40 okay so what was the context let's read the last paragraph first she removed the wraps from her shoulders before the glass for a final view of herself in her glory suddenly she uttered a cry her necklace was not around her neck so it was the time when she had when she got to know that her necklace had been lost got it children hmm okay garima give the answer so what did the couple do next they or only the man ओके ओके सर यस नेक्स्ट दीक्षा ओके रवनीत यस Mm. 
ओके पत्थुन गिव दी आंसर so the after the wife had known that she had she did not have the necklace around her neck so she so she uttered a cry and called her husband and told him that she had lost the necklace then the husband who was already half dressed dressed himself again and they checked for all the pockets in the dress and everywhere in the house but the necklace was nowhere to be found and then the husband then her husband went on the way they had came through and looked for the cab but unfortunately there was no sign of the necklace the very next day he complained to the police and and the and the whole day the whole day the wife waited for the response for the police if the necklace was to be found and but uh, the husband then suggested his wife to write a letter to madam frostrier in in writing that the neck the jewel was a bit this they had lost a jewel in the necklace so they would they would get the time to find it again and replace it with another one As the couple discovered that they had lost the jewel, they were in heuristics. They didn't know what had happened, and they tried to make guesses about when they had lost it. But when they came up with nothing, the husband went over the track. by which they went on foot to find if they had dropped it somewhere in between but when no sex no success was achieved he went the next day to the police to the cab drivers and gave an advertisement in the newspaper to offer a reward to the person who returned it but they came up with nothing then they decided to write a letter to madam frostier writing that they had broken the clasp of the necklace and that they needed a few days to get it mended and they would return it then after doing so they tried to search a necklace of a similar design and they discovered it in a jewelry shop for 40000 francs they managed to buy the necklace for 36000 by taking debts from various people and returned the necklace somehow after that they had to spend 10 years of misery to recover the amount they had loaned which she has missed or anything which is added from her own side hmm? yes anyone online yes chayank will give answer chayank can you dhvanesh will give answer dhvanesh yes hmm yes dhvanesh Yes, you are already muted, unmuted. Dhanesh, I guess you are not at home. Okay, you can mute. Yes, in nutshell, what the answer would be? Like, what did the couple do afterwards? Yes. What did the couple do afterwards? Number one, they uh, made sure that the necklace was not at home. Then they went back. Then the husband, Mr. Royzel, went back to 
see if they if she had dropped the necklace somewhere on the track which they had trodden okay finally when he came back they lodged an fir with the police and all because they did not have the number of that cab so they had to file a complaint in the in the cab office and finally they lodged an fir with the police also when nothing could be done he is uh, advised his wife to write a letter to madam frostier about uh, about uh, telling her that they had uh, broken the clasp of the necklace so they would need some time to get it mended so meanwhile they searched for the same kind of necklace and eventually they were able to get the same kind of necklace but it was very expensive and they purchased it for about 3600 francs 36000 francs so this this much amount they were able to manage thereby debting or getting borrowing from so many other people so they were able to buy the necklace and return it to madam frostier but it took about 10 years for them to to recover from this much of loss okay so this would be a long question but if you are asked to answer this question for two marks then what would you do then in brief what they searched they made sure that they, it was not at home went back to search the track where he might have dropped in she might have dropped the necklace but when nothing could be done they lodged an fir in the police station and even at the cab office that's it and eventually they had to buy a new one thereby borrowing money from different friends and relatives okay so the same things can be briefed out otherwise the same thing can be extended okay next question is how do they replace the necklace so that answer we have done in between how did they replace the necklace now the question is the end of the story i am there page number 46 the course of loisel's life changed due to the necklace comment the course of their life changed due to necklace yes what will you what will be your keywords to answer this question only keywords tell me yes okay so you mean that you will be focusing upon uh, uh, how it what they were and what they became later on no it's okay but in between you will also be talking about like why it happened all keywords i was asking for so discontentment okay materialistic approach okay obsession these things were the were the reasons for their downfall earlier they were living a very happy and pleasant life okay they were happy and blessed okay husband would go to home work and would come back they would enjoy dinner so everything they had whatever is required for a happy and peaceful life but because of this discontentment they landed themselves in trouble so that you will have to explain then earlier what then what okay then what you'll be explaining basically like uh, earlier she would uh, uh, cook food for her husband they would enjoy the dinner and all but afterwards she'll have to do all those petty jobs which she never ever imagined doing they shifted to an apartment which was uh, uh, which was not in a good area and then uh, the kinds of uh, uh, things she would do bringing uh, buckets of water then uh, going in to purchase grocery and everything okay the servants no maids were there uh, so no domestic help she had so all these things are there to point out like how dismal her life had become after her after her habit of being pretentious okay so use the word pretentious nature also she was very pretentious okay what was the cause of matilda's ruin in one word uh, her obsession and discontentment her discontentment with what she had and her obsession for being pretentious that made her get herself ruined and how could she have avoided it okay she was pretentious she went in to ask for the jewel she lost it but she could have avoided even then had she been able to confess it to her friend like what went wrong there and then her misery would have stopped okay 
so she committed mistakes after mistakes otherwise also it's a law of nature like when you do something wrong then there happens to be the series of wrongs you have to commit so one should be careful at the very first step but anyways if one is doing something wrong then also there happens to be a way out provided we seek that way out okay so how she could have avoided her ruin by confessing to her friend the truth that's the answer okay then what would have happened to matilda if she had confessed to her friend that she had lost her necklace what would have happened yes but there are two options maybe her friend had not told her then let's see otherwise also what would have happened if she had told her friend the reality that she had lost her necklace what would have happened diksha so let's uh, go for a role play right now diksha come here who is your very good friend chalo divita come here so divita is madam frostier and diksha is madam loizel so now diksha as madam loizel will go to frostier to tell her that she had lost her necklace let's see what Div uh, madam frostier says be uh, be original don't copy this text chalo come here you have lost your necklace you only have to tell her that uh, sorry dear i lost the necklace you gave me it was such a beautiful necklace but whatever okay nana you come nana is madam frostier and uh, divita you are madam uh, loizer <laughs> Yes, come on. It's your original script now. You have nothing to do with what is written there. Come here. Introduce yourself. Who you are? Who decide? What do you want to be? Poison. Hi, dear friend. I have lost a necklace by mistake. No problem. The necklace was not original. I am very delighted that you have spoke the truth to me. Sorry once again, and thank you for. Accepting my apology. Okay, so this, so this Madam Frostier is so honest. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now who else will come? So the Kushi and Arshi. Now Kushi will be Madam Frostier. <laughs> yes, the young boy. Uh, hey, Madam Frostia. Uh, sorry, I'm telling you late, but. Uh, I I am so so sorry for losing your necklace. I hope that you can understand. I don't know. I just went to the ball, but uh, after returning home, I just saw that I have lost your necklace. So please forgive me. How could you do that, Madam Loisa? That was my most prized possession. <laughs> so. um but uh, but i don't know how it lost but i but you can tell me the amount i'll pay you and so please forgive me about this but do you see the truth madam loisa i ask do you see the truth madam loisa i am saying the truth but please can you forgive me about this oh thank you you just have to send me 500 francs oh oh dara पहले तो पूछ ले क्यों देने हैं 
You can just yeah. pay me 500 francs, Madam Lloyd. It was a fake necklace. Okay, that's only 500 francs, but I was, but I actually, but uh, I actually apologize you for losing your necklace. But uh, yeah, I can pay you 500 francs. So thank you for understanding. Oh, sure, I'm generous like that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a little bit uh, authentic conversation it was. Hmm? Okay, yes, we cannot expect Madam Frostier to be that, uh, you know, that kind of woman. So in the beginning, what her dialogue was, that was quite convincing. And later on, yeah, she is generous. Okay, that is what we are able to make out through the story that Madam Frostier is exactly like this. She could not have gone beyond this much. So, okay, now let me ask uh, uh, Jayadatya and uh, Saksham. <laughs> So one of them is Madam Frostier and one of them is uh, Madam Loiser. <laughs> Role play. So, okay, anyone could be asked. Anyone can be asked. Okay, now next question is. Yes, now the question was like, what would have happened to Matilda if she had this we have done? So what would have happened to Matilda if she had confessed to her friend that she had lost her necklace? So what would have happened to her? She might have been able to live that kind of life, which might not have been that miserable as it actually became. Yeah, she might have to face a little bit of insult. She might have to get humiliated from her friend. Her friend might uh, tell her that she had broken her faith. Okay. Her friendship might have suffered. Her friend might have stopped talking to her. Her friend might not ever give her again another necklace like this. Yet, she would have saved herself from that disaster which happened with her. Other worse things might have happened. But this worst might not have happened at least. Okay, so that is why many a times what happens in real life also, when we commit a mistake, we don't tell others, elders, parents or teachers the reality, thinking that we might be scolded. But remember that uh, that might be really bad, but at least worse would not happen. So confess your problems or mistakes with others so that the worst doesn't come. Bad will come for sure. When you will confess your mistake, you will be scolded. There will be something, some punishment, but at least that will be only bad. That won't be the worst. That happened with this woman also. Okay. So by not confessing, she met her worst. She got the worst. Otherwise, only bad would have come. Got it? But don't expect like she would have very nicely told her, oh, never mind, it was a fake necklace. She might not have told her then. Remember this? She might not have told her that it was a fake necklace. Maybe. Because it was later on that she melted when she saw that she had become so miserable. Then she told her, oh my God, it was a fake necklace. After 10 years when she had kept her the real necklace with her. But you never know how the person would behave or react when you will actually tell him or her the reality. It's a human nature. Let's not forget this. Okay.